Since Seat launched the Lyon in 1999, they sold more than 2 million units of that car worldwide. And with this, the Lyon is one of the success stories of the brand Seat. Now they present the fourth generation of the car and we now have a closer look what is new with the new Seat Leon. Looking at the front of the Seat Leon, the car now is 1,80 m in width and this is about 17 mil less than the predecessor, but it doesn't look smaller or less wide and there are some good reasons for that. So one is the new grille. You may know or remember the shape from the Seat Turaco, but this one here is a lot flatter, wider, and that really gives the car a lot of power at the front. Another very important thing is the new shape here with a bonnet, which goes down into the car and really gives the car extra dynamic. Very important down here, these small bits and pieces you see, they not only work regarding to the aerodynamics, you can also change them easily, piece by piece, and that makes an accident a lot cheaper because you don't always have to change the whole bumper. But I think more important are the new headlamps. They're a bit more deep into the car, which gives the car a bit more yeah, an aggressive look from the front. And I think important to know is they always come as standard in LED technology, but you can have a bit more of technique if you want, and that then is called the full LED package. Looking at the side of the new Leon, the first thing that catches your eyes is the new bonnet, which is a bit more longer than what the predecessor and I think it looks a lot flatter. And that ends here at the bit steeper front window. Important to know is that the Leon comes to stand on the 16 inch wheels, but you can have 17 inch with the FR trim level or you can order up to 18 inch. The car has grown a lot, so now it's 4 meters 37 in length, which gives it about 9 centimeters more than the predecessor. But I think more important is we do find 5 centimeter more regarding to the wheel base. And that means we do have a lot more space at the interior. Looking at the design on the side, you find less lines. So the car is a lot cleaner than the predecessor, but you still find that one up here, very important for sale, and that one down there, which gives the car a bit more of power. And the line here that really ends at the typical Seat Leon end. So we have this line here, which then runs into the taillights of the car. The new Seat Leon offers as much space as the predecessor. I think maybe a bit more. So even as a tall person like I am, you do really sit very comfortably here at the front, which means for driver and co-driver, absolutely fine. On top of this, you can, yes, adjust the steering wheel the way you want as you used to with the predecessor, but the steering wheel is new. It's new. So you now have buttons here, completely new style. Left-hand side is more for the, um, for the speed, speed control and for the um, assessment and uh, safety systems. Right-hand side is more to work with the uh, infotainment and with your new full digital cockpit, which is an optional feature. So as standard, you will not find it, but you can have a 10.25 inch full digital cockpit, which works very, very nice. On top of this, the car now offers an eight inch touchscreen for the infotainment as standard, but up to 10, which is mounted in here. And that really is very nice. It offers you loads of extra information, loads of very nicely presented stuff. Important to know is you do not find any more buttons and knobs in the car, which means when you have this system on board, everything goes through that big screen here. Also the air condition, but you do find on top, as with the new Volkswagen Golf, this sensor um, based uh, uh, system down here where you can slide and where you can just work with the heating and where you can zoom in and out and all that stuff. Um, on top of this, you do of course not find any knobs anymore regarding to the control of your light. This is the same as with the Golf. It looks exactly the same here at left uh, under the steering wheel. And when you drive the automatic version, you do not find a standard gear shifter anymore. You will have this small shift by wire one, but this one then provides you with extra uh, compartment space. So not very bad. Um, regarding to the compartment based space, you do find the optional um, wireless charging here at the front. And so the um, system then offers you on top, of course, Android Auto and um, Apple CarPlay and that wirelessly if you want. But if you need a cable, you have to know you can only use USB-C ports here in that car. Um, very important with that car is when you look at the shape of the car, it looks a lot wider, a lot more, yeah, more modern. And this one reason for that is because you, the, the whole dashboard runs into the side of the car. So it really runs into the door panels. And that really gives you the impression of a very modern, very, very wide and very nice car. And another thing which is very new is you find in that car a completely new voice recognition, which gives you the opportunity to talk to your car. And if you want to start that one, you just have to say, hola, hola.
Another new thing is that you will find a proper ambient light now in the car. And this is not only the light that runs around you and gives you this illumination, it also works together with the assistance systems. Which means, for instance, if you want to change lane and there's somebody aside of you, then that uh, signal will not only come out of the window, uh, out of the uh, uh, rearview mirror, it also will come um, with, this, um, with the flashing or the, uh, a change of the color of this ambient light. So I think that's a very nice idea. When the Leon hits the market, there will be a whole variety of different drivetrains available. So you will find petrol as well as diesel, you will find mild hybrids, you will find natural gas, and you will find a plug-in hybrid as well. Important to know is that the smaller petrol engines, so the 1 litre and the 1.5 litre, they offer an active cylinder management, which will save fuel. Then on top you will find the mild hybrid, which works with a 48 volt technology, and that will save fuel as well. I think very important also to know is the CNG, so the natural gas version, which offers you a pure gas range of more than 400 kilometers. And then there is the plug-in hybrid version, and with that one you can drive up to 60 kilometers and even more on electric energy only. Gear shifting will work either with a manual gearbox or with a DSG, and some of the cars will be available with four drive, so the four wheel drive of Seat. The Leon is a very charismatic vehicle. It worked perfectly in the market. Even now, it's a still leader of sales in Spain. So we had, uh, we had the reasons to keep a little bit the soul, but obviously design has to evolve. So basically we have changed a lot of things, basically everything, uh, but keeping a few elements that remind this iconicity of Leon. The first thing that changes is the proportion of the car. When you see it from the side view, the car has dramatically changed. The hood is much longer than before. Now it's pretty vertical, almost negative at the front. The cabin is a little bit backwards. A pillar has been moved backwards, but we keep the typical seat triangle of the C post uh, at the back. So this talks very much about Leon. Another thing that you will see like a kind of connection with today's Leon is the body language. We have our character lines on the side, basically three lines define the whole body side, the two blisters on the top and one on the bottom. That's it. With that, we design the body side of the Leon. But this time it has become much more sculpted, less theoretical. Now everything is like one surface, soft surface moving along the body and not so theoretical as today. So basically a lot of things change, but everything is new. On the interior is the same. We keep the central item or the central motive of the design uh, with the infotainment screen. It is always high position, oriented towards the driver, like we like it at Seat, perfectly aligned with the digital combimeter, but um, we redefine how we integrate this screen into the interior of the car with a very thin and very wide dashboard, high console. So again, same concept, but completely different uh, design approach. So as you see, I've entered the rear seats and I have to say, really, there is a lot more space. So as you can see, I didn't change my seating position at the front and here I really have space left in front of my knees. And uh, yeah, when I sit upright, I really do have head space left. So I have to say the comfort on the second seat row here it has really grown a lot. So this really is a big difference. Looking at the rear of the car, the first thing that really is a big eye catcher is that. We have a light here going from coast to coast. This is full LED and when you look at that, that runs around here. So that's, this now is the new Seat signature when we talk about the tail of a Seat. Very important to know is when you open your car, that really gives you a, yeah, a welcome. You have just the glue that runs in that direction. It really is something very nice and looks absolutely beautiful. But I think very important to know is that doesn't come as standard. So you have to pay extra or you have to have a higher trim level to get that signature. When you look at the rest of the car, this is a typical Seat Leon shape. So really the typical proportions, we have this very nice um, rear bumper here. We have this typical arch here. And because of the FR version, we do find two big exhausts, but fake. Um, but I think very important with that car, when you look at the tail, is that. You do have the Seat logo which is the door opener, but more important is you find the new Seat Leon signature. And this now is 
like handwritten. And I think this is something you may find with other Seat cars in the future as well. Uh, but when we stand here, now let's have a closer look into the boots. The new Seat Leon now offers 380 liters of maximum boot capacity with the rear seats up. That's the same as with the predecessor, but when you fold down the seats, thanks to the new wheelbase, that car then features 1,301, which is about 90 liters more. That's it from the new Seat Leon, the fourth generation. What I really do like with the cars, when you look at the front, it looks a lot more, yeah, a lot more aggressive, a lot more muscular, and I think a lot more modern as well. Um, when you look at the interior of the car, we do now find an optional, a digital cockpit, which I really do like a lot. We do find an up to 10 inch infotainment, really very nice, loads of new functions, loads of very yeah, easy to uh, get used to stuff. And this car then doesn't feature any knobs anymore. I'm not sure if I will yeah, be a big fan of that, but maybe I just have to get used to. When we look at the rear seats, you do find a lot more space with these five centimeters more wheelbase, and that really is the extra comfort. Looking at the boot, it is in principle the same, except you fold down the rear bench. <music>